Call meeting to order. Where's the Where's the Commissioner Mays? Here. Commissioner Schmidt? Here. Commissioner Dino? Here. Commissioner Wall? Here. We're going to say. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any public comment? Hearing none. Uh, administration and Finance, Commissioner White. So today, this is the uh, budget review workshop? Yes, that is correct. And or, uh, what we affectionately refer to it as the Marty O'Brien Show. Uh, so, Marty. Sorry, me. <laughs> oh. well, thanks for everybody for coming. This is uh, a chance for us to go through budget and to highlight the differences, what happened in the prior year, what happened, what we expect to happen in the current year. Highlighting some differences and uniquenesses about just this period of time, or which we, I'm going to call, and you'll see it over and over again, eight-month budget, eight-month budget, eight-month budget. And the reason was we just want to highlight the fact that this is a very unique situation. Once we pass this, we're not going to go back and ever do it again, I hope. And that's for that's the reason why we're trying to highlight why this is uh, so much of a so much differences than what we have normally presented in the past. So, um, what we're hoping and we start child here. It's been first time. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through uh, and I'm going to head on the the budgetary process. Now the budget is a requirement. It's a statute. We have to pass a budget within the first quarter of the new year. So we prefer to have that pass before the start of the year because that is our goals of what we can spend for the uh, period of time we're talking about. I'm going to use year and period somewhat interchangeably, but I'm mostly, I'm, I'm always going to be talking about this period of the 2018 budget. It will be 20, May 1, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. Okay, the goals of the upcoming budget, we, we, we review um, the things we can't control. And the main thing we can control is expenditure. Um, revenues are a little bit more tougher to control because we have statutes that drive our main revenue sources and other, other, other economic conditions control them. So we're, we, we try to look at the expenditures with an eye for what we can get to get the most benefit. Uh, the budget is drafted by myself with input from all the departments. We take all their inputs and we uh, put them together and we see where we stand. And then, and then after that, we present it to the executive director and we go over where the high points are, the low points, what we need and what we need to have available in order to have a, a budget that we can that, that will stand on itself. Unfortunately, this budget won't be one of them because it's being that it's an eight-month budget. We're we're bound by the fact that we the statutes say we can only we get our property taxes twice a year, and one of the collection dates or one of the issuance dates of our property taxes will be outside the budget period. So um, that gets a little bit ahead of us. But this is only going to be an eight-month budget, and next year we're going to go through another first time, and it'll be a calendar year budget. So, but at least the calendar year budget. We'll have all the revenue sources that we anticipate, and it will match other things like the property tax levy and the payroll taxes and other other things that are more driven by calendar more than fiscal year. Okay, we're going to go look a little bit into the 2017-18 budget, which is the period we're in right now. The, the full time this will be the last time we'll do a fiscal year budget for 2017-18. Um, we're we're predicting right now. Revenues to exceed expenditures by approximately fifty thousand dollars. We're looking at the um, to, uh, but uh, we're we're looking at property tax collections to increase by approximately two percent based on the CPI and the uh, the information that we get from the assessor on establishing what the CPI will be that will affect the property tax gap. We. We're looking at, in this period, this current year, we're looking at preschools and, and other programs that can rise and that's to, uh, to be about 4%. Participation has gone up 
Uh, more than that, it's up to nine percent. That's mostly for uh, we have we we are predicting our registrations and our well we already saw our registration for count increasing by up to nine percent. So we're anticipating that to continue into the new uh, eight month period. Pools. Pools went down. Pools, we had a uh, loss mostly in the daily receipts part of it, and that was mostly. Uh, pools are driven two main sources of revenues passes and uh, daily emissions. Passes stayed approximately the same, daily emissions went down. We, use, we associate the daily emissions going down due to changes in uh, bad weather. June is a very critical month in the pool season. Once we get past June, if we have a bad June, we're going to have a bad year. July and August sort of taper off, and they're not as driven by that. But June's, we, we, uh, uh, a bad June or a wet or cold June will, that will affect, will have a, a detrimental effect on our, where we're going to stand for our pool revenues. And fitness membership fairly stayed the same. Um, there, there's some changes in fitness membership in this period. Group X was based on board meeting we had in the past. Group X was uh, changed from a program to part of fitness membership, and so that that increased our fitness membership a little bit. But uh, on, on the other side, Group X costs that were mostly a program, standalone program, are now part of the fitness membership costs. So that, that we have to absorb a, the fitness instructors. So it's a you you have some ups and some downs in the fitness side. Areas of concern. Um, we're always concerned because we're, we're so driven on property taxes that the, the, the you know, uh, tax freezes and tax reductions in CPIs are, are, are a strong driver of our uh, where, where we think our revenue sources will be. Property taxes are approximately 60, 65 percent of our total revenues in the Right now, or in the last legislative session cycle, there was the bond D D S E V, or the amount of you could raise the bonds were going to be frozen. It never passed, but there's always the possibility of something a new tax cap that doesn't have a CPI factor, or or any kind of changes to one of our main sources of revenue. Labor costs are escalating because we always have, we have a couple of things. We have the possibility of minimum wage changing, but also the market changes quite a bit because we have to compete with other areas and other districts to draw the best people. So if we're paying, even if we're paying minimum wage, we may not be able to get the people we want unless we increase our, our wages to attract them away from other districts. Facilities, our facilities are aging. You've been around, you've taken the tours of all the field houses, the, the power pool, this building. There's a lot of the facilities aging. There's a lot of aging in the facility, and we have to make uh, capital planning on how we're going to address the aging of the facility and how we're going to use the facilities in the future and how we're going to change the, the usage of, of the different parks, whether we're going to have field houses, we're going to remodel them, upgrade them, tear them down, make them just shelters, any kind of thing that affects our, our budget. Principal and interest, this December 2018 will be the first time a principal payment is due on Oreo Pool. From every December between now and 2018 to 2032, we'll be making approximately $400,000 to $500,000 a year payment for principal for Oreo pool. And we already went into the uh, power pool and the renovations that will that'll be needed in the future. Okay. The proposed budget we're presenting for this, this eight month period is 5,334,000, which is approximately 3.4% increase over the period, over the same period of 2017. What we did is we analyzed what we spent in the eight month period of 2017 and we use that as our base to where to uh, to build our 2018 budget because we don't really have all the uh, revenue sources and the tracking devices we 
because we, we haven't, we don't usually do this kind of uh, budgeting. So we've taken what we what we spent in, in, a, in a similar period and tried to adjust the differences. As, as mentioned earlier, this is an eight-month budget. We were presented, the budget we presented for a period of May 1 to December 30th. It's, it's a conversion from the fiscal year, which was May 1 to April 30th. We're, we went over that we're using the period of, uh, that same period of 2017 as our base, and we're going to take that period and adjust it for any uh, any additions, any anything that we, any expenditures that we need to add, such as CPIs and, and new services, and whatever we can take out. We're, any questions so far? You're answering all mine. Oh, all. okay. Very good. Uh, I, I, do, I uh, do have a question. Yes. So this increase with the camps yes. that we projected, right. is that because there's a trend of maybe um, younger families moving into town, or or how do we do we have any idea of how we're projecting that? Is well, that I can take the one on. Uh, have we seen an increase, you know, like well, percentage every year? A couple of things. One is we have camps that we, um, we camps used to cover a couple of things. Early early rise uh, camp. Uh, there was five periods of camp, and then, and then there was other service early late. And we kind of rolled them all up into one. But is there any trend you know of, Joe? That I, our numbers, our camp numbers, have been trending up. That 9.7% increase was the increase from summer of 16 to summer of 2017. So we're not in the budget actually projecting another 10% increase. We're assuming it's going to kind of level yeah. off a little bit. Obviously, hopefully, it will continue to grow, and that's the trend that's controlling. I, I, I seen, it seems like we've got a lot of more. Left. Or younger right. families moving in, so I believe that it's going to help increase over the years. Right. Yeah, well, well camp does uh, mirror what is going on in the school, so they'll see it. You can dip some rises, and we'll see that as well. I also um, think it's uh, important to point out that uh, Kari uh, has done an excellent job of turning uh, camp around as well. So I think word out is that it's a, it's a much better program than what it has been in the past. Okay. And then we covered most of the budget. Oh, so. the, and 20, we anticipate that the 2019 will have a full levy and therefore we'll be presenting a balanced budget. One of the things is, is that, and I'll cover this a little later, is this budget's out of, uh, out of sorts because it's out of, um, the revenues were projected at 66 percent, while, while the uh, sorry, the revenues were projected at 50 percent, while the expenditures were presented at 66 percent. So by that alone, we're going to be out of out of uh, out of balance by roughly 500 thousand dollars. And unfortunately, and, and I'll get into this later, but when they do the financial statements based on accruals and and levies, the way they the levies, it may not look as bad as that, but one of the things is, is that because of the way timing issues, this budget will not be in balance. And when we do the financials at the end of the year, it's probably going to show up the same way, similar out of balance. Well, that's pretty. Okay. Probably. I didn't know it was going to do that. I'll just, I'll just tell you right now. That's why I have to use that template. Yeah. Great, Marty. I was thought I was getting losing it there. Change that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Keep me awake. Anything else you're going to do? Um, we're just going to look on molecular split. Here's a breakdown of where our revenues come from. As you can see, taxes are a major drive for 63%, program revenue. 28%, pools 4%, community center 3%, and others 2%. So between our programs and revenues, that's about 90% of your money. So that's it's a, the, the, those two are the main driving forces in how we're uh, putting together the budget. Pools taking more revenue than community center does? 
I'm sorry. It's close. It's close, but see, the problem is with the community center is only have the fitness part of it. The fitness part uh, is, and the pools. So the pools are around, and what we're projecting to for the pools having a good pool season would be around 170, 180,000. Fitness center here is probably 150,000 roughly. So it, it, it can change on the pool. If you have a bad season on the pool side of it, you can have the community center going up. So th this is, th those percentages will change for probably after, uh, you know, it depends on how our seasons go. Second half of the disbursement of the from the Cook County Treasury. So therefore, your, your your biggest portion, which would be the March payment, is not going to make it until 2019. So we have to anticipate that loss. Program members are, are partial uh, for the partial. Are, are we project to be up about 2.66% or $25,000. Joe had to do quite a bit of analyzing of this program revenue due to the fact that we have things that like uh, our major pro nine month programs all had to be divided, payment plans had to be analyzed. We had to take into account what what what, what was when people paid in the past and not and not counted exactly that way, and and then other things like pools and other programs that were used to be all other one program were not. So uh, Joe had to analyze most of both the programs and the expenditures to come up with a, an estimate of what our revenues and expenditures will be for 20, uh, budget period 2018. Uh, revenues from the community center, we're projecting for the partial to be up to 14,000. Uh, one of the things with that is that they are, we're expecting that the, um, because of the way, one of the, the big changes is Rubacks, the way Rubacks is kind of used to be a program, so it would be in a different section of the budget. Now we're projecting at some costs like Open Gym and uh, Open Gym and uh, Guest Services. People yeah. walk ins will be in the W part of the community center budget, but also on the other side of it, it has to pick up the instructor cost, so that's where the net effect is. In the, uh, all. And pool revenue, uh, we're expecting increase by 4% from the previous year. We're hoping to have a better month of June. We're, we're, we've, we've been conservative with the pool revenues, but we're, we're trying to project that uh, the, the June of 2017 didn't provide enough uh, weather-wise that would slow down our, our, our revenues. And then there's a projected bond sale for 2018. We, the last bond sale we did was for one year, and it was a tax exempt one. We're, we're altering our, our bond schedule to do it again in, in November of 2018, and that will coincide with when the first bond payment is due for Oreo Pool. I'll get into this later, but Oreo Pool's bond projected payment is approximately $640,000. Of that, four hundred thousand of its principal, two hundred thirty-nine interest. Okay. Yeah. All right, we broke down expenditures here. I see one didn't make it, uh, but for the most part, the, the, these okay. well, so, materials and supplies. Yeah. But this is both. This is uh, salaries, yep. and then this is material and supplies. I don't know why it didn't. Where, where it lost it too. But as you can see, salary costs, program costs, and bond costs take up a, a major chunk of your your budget, and that goes all. Those are all tied into personnel costs, retirement, healthcare costs. Also, would be, would be considered on that. So. A major portion of our budget is related to personnel costs. Okay, significant expenditure changes. We're we're, we're predicting 
the CPI is probably going to be about one and a half percent, um, based on what we've uh, looked at our economic data. It, it could be better, we're, we're, but we're taking a conservative approach right now. We're, we're also um, budgeting about the two percent. We're budgeting for all eligible staff. Even though it's an eight-month budget, we wanted to um, average or um, average out the the amount of raises to equal the, the time of the year. So it's an eight-month budget. So if it was a twelve-month budget, it would be more likely to be budgeting three percent for it. But being it's an eight-month budget, we're going to we're going to get 66 percent and then make it to two percent. Yeah, it was, it was, again, this is a timing thing. So, you know, in April, we do evaluations and, and have uh, uh, salary increases ready for May 1st. So, great, that was what you did for the previous year. So, coming back, we were like, okay, we can't do 3%, 3%, because that would just be a little heavy. So, we decided, okay, you're, you get a 2% and a 2%. So, it's a little bit more than what we normally do, but it was a probably the best way to kind of pull it out that was fairest to uh, the employee as, and without being a heavy burden on the budget. We're going to get you a refill. What? We're going to get you a refill. This is going to go on for a while. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> this new. Okay, uh, so um, we're, this, going over again, we, we predict to have a um, the, the bond and interest payment for Oriel Pool is 640000 Now, going down to the second step, which is the 909, we, 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 borrowed, we sold the bonds for 2017, January 1st, 2018. That's going to also come due December 1st, 2018. So the combination of both of those two mean we're going to have to come up with approximately $1 million five to pay back to the bondholders on December 1st, 2018. So that's... That's where we have we have a, enough cash on hand to make that payment. So, uh, and so when you see the budget, I mean the uh, vendor payments for that month, you'll see it'll be quite high. Uh, they, we're also that's where the, so that's why we're running the bond. We're going to issue bonds in November instead of January, so that we'll have a bond sale that'll co coincide within 30 days of the payment of the old bonds, so that we can use tax exempt bonds. And that we can, we won't have to come up with our own cash for that, that period of time, so, and that'll cut down on our interest costs too. The overall expenses we estimated increased by approximately two hundred thousand, and uh, anticipated revenues by one hundred fifty thousand. We're we're being conservative, uh, but we have to be careful. We don't want to pass a budget that's too doesn't have enough appropriations to cover us that eight-month period because then I'll have to come back in November and do a supplemental appropriation. And I'm trying to avoid that. So we try to anticipate um, a lot of things. And so even though the, the, some of these numbers may look a little high, like overall expense is going to 4%, we, we're, we're, under the, we, we're trying to build up enough money of appropriations into the budget so that we don't want to spend it, but we have it, and so we don't have to ask for a supplemental appropriation. The supplemental appropriation would be any time we have to ask for more more money than what we originally budgeted in our original uh, appropriation that will be that we will pass on April 19th. Okay. All right. This is all all the funds that we have. Now we're mostly going to spend most of our time on corporate recreation. Police and museum are very are small and they, they should go through pretty fast. IMRF and FICA, they're statutory. We really don't have much choice on those. We we have to fund what we're only our only decision is how much do we revenue we budget towards it because the appropriations are pretty much set. Bond, with that set, we already know that we already passed the bond, so we already know we have no nine hundred nine thousand for that. Special rec. Special Rec has different rules. It's not subject to the property tax cap, but it is subject to a, uh, a maximum levy of 0.004%, 0 0.0004%. So therefore, we're, we already budget that one out to the max, and that will cover what doesn't, isn't covered under Manasseh and inclusion. 
it comes under ADA and they have a big ADA project for Harvard Park this year for the paths in Harvard Park. Uh, capital projects, that's all funded by bonds. Liability and audit, again, those are really statutory. Uh, liability covers most of our, our, all our insurance needs, safety needs, workman's comp, unemployment, and the audit is the what we pay the auditors who do our annual external audit. Okay, corporate fund highlights. So, we're mainly, uh, goes back to the same thing, we're corporate fund for the most part just covers the uh, revenues for the most of the administration and maintenance functions of the park district. We kind of divide things into two areas. Well, again, the recreation we'll cover that too. Recreational fund expenditure usually usually expenditures that we have a cost component to. Corporate fund accounts are usually accounts that don't have a cost component. In other words, that the, we're not expected to get anything back for our our money that we spend to cut the grass. We're not expected to get any money back for our painting of buildings. It's, it's just what we have to do in order to maintain the buildings and the parks, and the parks have free access to all, to all people. The 2018 budget, uh, estimated budget of revenue is 647,000, while budget expenses are a million five, I'm sorry, a million and fifty. And that goes back to the difference of the collection rates and you know, timing of the property taxes. 73% of, of that budget comes from property taxes. And then the remaining comes from PPRT and rental of an answer and other interest, you know, interest on investments. Okay. So this goes in, this is how we're uh, breaking it down for the uh, Manassas rent, we just need to negotiate the Manassas rent, so that's eight months of uh, approximately 5700 a month. PPRT, I'll go into and property tax, I'll explain later. Interest, we're, our, our, it's all on our district investments that we don't have immediate need for, that we, we would invest for the what we can, and what we can get according to our investment policy, which is very, very conservative. We have mainly CDs and federal FDIC type products. Okay, property taxes. You, everybody gets a property tax bill, right? So we always wondered what that was all about, why we get what, how it gets to, where it comes from, and and what's the um, and, and how it's generated. Well, our property tax bill and our property tax system is ad valorem, and ad valorem just means it's based on the value of your property. So what happens is that the Cook County Assessor will come through and assess everybody's property in the district that we're, the district boundaries that we're in, or more, which is 90% of Morton Grove, there's some exception to school view. The district is subject to a tax cap, which means that we can only raise our property taxes the CPI amount. So the CPI amount has been around, it was much better this time around than it was prior. Prior was under one, this time it was one and a half. Then we, the district puts all its needs and all its levies out to the county and sa says this is all the money we would like to have. And then the county comes back and kind of trims it by the fact that because of the property tax cap, you can't ask for more than the CPI times what the EAV is. And, the, and I'll, get, I'll get into the EAV a little later, but mainly the EAV is your assessed valuation of all your property along with a multiplier that's established by the state. And the state just adds a multiplier on it to be sure that it comes up to a figure that is one and a half percent of what it was before. So the, they take the amount of your property and they raise up the value of it for property tax purposes so that it will it will be approximately, they try to get it to be whatever the CPI is, which is, which at this, which in the last known cycle is one and a half percent. Okay, next we, we, we talk about PPRT. PPRT is a personal property replacement tax for anybody who remembers back into the 19, you know, 1970s. We used to have what they call personal replacement tax. That was taxes that they put on cars, vehicles, and things you purchased that were large enough. Well, it went from the, it was determined unconstitutional, and 
therefore, the state passed a, another type of thing called the personal property replacement tax. The, the, the personal property tax replacement tax is based on corporate earnings. So, and, and it gets dispersed eight times a year. So we, um, it's January, March, May, June, October, December. But so when we put out the, um, they they sent us some, they sent us a check based on the distribution that happened back in 1978 because whatever our portion of our PRT was against all the value of all the PRT back in 1978 is what percentage we get of the PPRT times whatever money they collected from corporate property taxes. So that that money has been pretty steady. It it went down by 7% because they over dispersed the two years before and then they found their errors so we had to absorb probably about a 8 or 9% loss in our PPRT and then now we're back, we should be back to where we were. We, we, we probably get around 100, 170, 180,000 PPRT this year. Other revenue, we, we Main, uh, main Niles, we have a, a lease with Main Niles. We just we went through the uh, renegotiation every five years. They reanalyzed the cost of the rent. I mean, not the cost of rent. They, the rent, rental fees, and they adjust it based on what like property in the area will be. Then we, and then we every year in between we had a one. I think we're it's a one percent CPI that we have on the. Uh, they, but every five years we go through negotiate 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 will be the last one, I believe, then we'll have to do a full lease again. Okay. okay 2021. 2021. Okay. Yeah. And then mainly just interest on investment, other income, such as uh, sponsorship, scholars, miscellaneous fees. Not not much. They, they're just, the corporate fund is, is the, the fund that usually gets everything that doesn't have a specific purpose to it. So, kind of like the all inclusion fund. Okay, we get into salary expenses. We budgeted for uh, two percent. That's a major portion of the corporate fund. Legal fees. We increased our legal fees by uh, because under the pre previous budget we had a large credit for our legal fees. So, uh, if you look at our legal fees for 2017, you'll see they're almost zero. It might have been five hundred dollars. That absorbed entire credit. We change our our attorneys, and we projected that for any one period, based on what we spent before we had the credit, we're expecting to spend about twenty five thousand dollars, twenty six thousand. We only spent about five hundred last year. Uh, IT assistance rate. We we have a contract with Frameworks that handles our IT. Those uh, we're all, we're putting in a new financial software system plus some. Uh, other uh, things like uh, disaster recovery and bringing you know, back the system uh, in order to have backups so that we anticipate they'll have some fees there. Uh, parks and maintenance, we have a, we're budgeting more what we call, we have a term we call them six months uh, temporary uh, maintenance employees. They're going to work for a six month period. They're actually going to work for approximately April to November, but is it April to November? April to November. So, and, uh, and so we, since we're not counting April, we, we figure from May to November. So we're, we're uh, budgeting for those three. Plus, we're budgeting for three summer seasons. And those will just be just in the summer season, June, July, August. So the combination of both, and the purpose of that is so that we can. To, uh, we have a list of maintenance needs at the parks that we need to address, and we need to have enough of them, uh, employees to, and, and, and especially in our busy season in the summer, in the summer, in the fall, and spring, to hit all our needs so that we can catch up on the things that we've uh, left behind. Uh, yeah, just um, for a little bit more uh, background, so when uh, Keith came on board, one of the things that we asked him to do was to you know, look at um, the staffing of the parks department to see where we're at. You know, we were always told that, yeah, we have enough people working out for enough people. Uh, he does the analysis and he finds that he's two and a half people down. 
So, you know, we tried to figure out what we could do last summer, um, and we were able to um, shift some money uh, from where we have contracts and everything to these you know, seasonal employees. So the seasonal employees are beneficial because we only use them when we absolutely need to use them. Uh, you know, they, there isn't any additional expense, healthcare expenses, that sort of thing, benefits. So we utilize those a lot. Um, so that's the, the thing that Keith is going to be doing again is looking at this and, you know, ideally we would like to have, you know, more than just what we have. Because we were really initially looking at like a nine month seasonal, a couple of them, uh, I think it was three, three nine month seasonals and, and two uh, three month seasonals. Uh, and it's just, you know, just not economically feasible as what uh, Marty was saying that well, we're setting whatever we do this year, we're really going to have to, uh, it's really going to put a lot of pressure on next year's budget. So that's something to consider. And, you know, uh, the Parks Department, I think, in the, in the last several years was it was one of those areas where if they needed to cut the budget, they would, just, they would cut the budget out of that. Um, and it has, in my estimation, has somewhat suffered because of that. So um, as it gets the equipment that it, that it needs, but if you don't have the people uh, to actually use the equipment, then it's kind of somewhat useless. So we find that this is probably the best way to do it, but we still need to continue to look at the Parks Department make sure that it has the resources it needs to do the job that's required. So for 2018, we're looking at nine seasonal, basically, total? Uh, we are looking at three, three, six, and two, okay. three months. Okay. So we've got five. Three, six, and it'll be, we're, we plan three, six, and three, three. Oh, so three and three? Yeah. Okay, sorry. So yeah. six, six total yes. yes. for the yeah. summer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're almost like nine months where, but because the budget's shorter, it's only May to, and we don't usually use them in December, that's why they became six months instead of, uh, you know, seven, six. We're, we're not sure because if the weather changes in May, there's some times that you may not have everybody here because of uh, the need. So we try to A, trim them down uh, as much as we could, but also remember that, that next year they'll probably, they will be nine months. And, and although that we're seeing the, the, the increase in, in the contractual expenditures because of the way that we're going to be using them, have one work Sunday to Thursday, another one working Tuesday to Saturday, we're hoping that we can cut down on some full-time staff overtime, which can be significant in the summer months. So but, you know, there's, a, there's a balancing between you know, multiple funds here. So although it looks you know an increase here, it could mean a decrease of their Done. We're done with the corporate fund. Anybody have any questions on the corporate fund? One down, nine to go. Uh, it gets exciting after this. No, <laughs> 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 oh, let me have to throw away when I'm done. I've been my job. So, all right. We're, we're, we're going into the second. We're going into the recreation fund. The recreation fund really is our biggest fund. It's it's twice over twice as much as the corporate fund. It takes into all the activities that the park district runs that we believe that there's a there's some cost recovery component attached to it. So, some programs have 30%, some have enough to break even, plus some have enough to break even, some even though we'd like them to break even, do not. So, and yeah. that covers all the different programs that we'll have. So, for the most part, recreation kind of divided up into four sections. Administration, programs, pool, and this building community center. So we when we report, we report the recreation as all is one fund. So under that fund, we expect revenues to be, for this eight month period, be a million six, and we expect um, expenditures to be a million seven. So um, this highlights the sources, and this is just rehashing all the corporate fund part about property taxes, which is, uh, is the, and all the restrictions we have in kind of issue for property taxes. Then next is revenues. Revenues we we project about uh, six hundred nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. Pools one hundred forty, which is more than it was in the last year, but it's a conservative number based on the uh, 
complete. And then the community center for approximately 160. Uh, administrative expenses, most administrative expenses are most are all our, our full time um, and all our full time people under the fire department are, are covered under administrative services or 99% of our there's both there's a couple that are outside that we'll get to them later. Uh, and other costs that we don't we can't directly associate with a, a program or a, a a function of the park is becomes a administrative expense. Uh, secondly, we go into is uh, program expenses, and that's associated with program revenue. So a program is a standalone activity. We, we, we track the revenues for that activity, and we, we track the, uh, the cost of that activity. And the activity, we hope, will budget 30, we, we budget, I mean, our, our ideal thing is to have 30% or more. Sometimes it doesn't become 30%. But we want to run the program anyway because we see value to it. Pools, again, pools are, uh, you know, the operating costs of the pools are very high. The, the salaries, the you know, chemicals, the utilities, water, we're always losing money on the pools, and we have lost money on pools for the last 20 years, probably. Longer than that. Yeah. Good. So it's, it's been quite a while. So they, we like to keep that loss as, as minimal as possible. So, but just by the operation of the pool, you, you cannot, and, and staffing and the staffing requirements, you're going to always operate on a loss. We're hoping to keep that loss. It's this is a loss of about two hundred thousand here, but it's not. We'll probably be able to come down because if the revenues go down, the expenses go down with it because you don't need to staff the pool if it's closed. And then the community center expenses. That's this whole building. So part of it's the fitness center. Part of it's the gym. Part of it's our offices. There's all kinds of costs and so utilities for operating and maintaining this building. Already in your pool expenses, is there yep. money in that budget for repairs and upgrades? <clears throat> Here's the thing is that pool repairs, anything that can qualifies a capital expense will be put in as a capital expense. So for the most part, your pool costs are your operating costs. Okay, so that's what this number is based on? Yes, just, uh, just operating costs. Now some, there could be some repairs and replacement in there, but for the most part, those are things that would not have qualified as capital expense, such as uh, things that are cost less than $1,000 a piece, or things that aren't gonna last a year, or any of those kind of costs that do not qualifies a capital. For the most part, anything that does qualify for a capital, such as the pipe replacement or the pipe replacement or the uh, pump, the pump and, and that, the pump replacement, and, and a couple other things that we had over the years, th those have been moved to capital. Yeah. Okay. Again, again, property taxes. Uh, reduction of property taxes for the um, because of the timing. Uh, general sponsorship. For the most part, administration doesn't have that many sources of revenue. Mostly property taxes. They have um, they have sponsorship money, MB, call one, different sources. The re the only one sponsorship money that make it here are ones that don't have a commitment to a particular project. If somebody if some organization gives us money and they don't have a stipulation on where what a particular program it's supporting, they'll end up in general sponsorship, as well as general advertising revenue, such as for the brochures, any kind of uh, advertising we do in the brochures. If, they, if we get checks, like for example, for um, holidays or, or home crews or sizzle, sizzle, thank you, then those are those are tracked in the program that the that we so we can track the cost of that program to be sure to see that it's, we're running a program that, that that all the costs all the revenue sources are, are covering all the expenditures and where we stand afterwards. All right. Again, we expect the salaries and expenditures to go up around seven thousand or two percent. That's like I said. I'm, it's here, but it's it's going to be the same thing every time we see labor. Any funds that carry labor. Banking fees. Banking fees have changed because back about uh, a year ago, maybe a year, 18 
few months. I don't remember. The ActiveNet, we used to have ActiveNet as our registration software system. They had their cost, they were a hosted system, and their fees were, I think they were around three, 3000 a month, roughly. I think it came for three or six. But anyway, the whole total of it was around 30000 I can't remember. It's about 35000 35000 okay. Well, we switched over to VSI, which is Vermont Systems. It, it, it's somewhat, it, there's a lot of things that are better with it, that, and the, one of them is the fees. The fee structure is a lot less. I, I believe when we were hosting for the year of 2017, it was around 1500 a month, so that went down. That would have made it about 18000 Then we changed just recently from hosted to our own server, and so that leaves us of the $1,500 we are paying a month. So uh, banking fees will be progressively going down in this uh, next couple, and then throughout this budget period and starting in 2019. Uh, public relations costs are increasing. Do we, do, well, before, we would send out printing to certain uh, outside companies. We're doing a lot more of it in-house. And uh, as well as uh, more promotions and more giveaways to highlight things like fitness, uh, fitness membership, and other things that the partnerships offer. And staff training, uh, we required our, our, our professional staff to attain a designation of CPRP. Well, one of the attachments to CPRP is that they have to have so much training per year, which is, I believe, on an hour a month or you know, 10 hours a year. So we increased our our training budget to, to cover the cost of, uh, of our, all our professional staff meeting their requirements in order to keep their CPRP available. Yeah, uh, just a couple of things in general about expenses. Wherever we think that we can um, cut expenses reasonably, that we can. So like uh, we were talking about the hosting of VSI, that you know, it was a monthly expense, however, we. Uh, upgraded the software, or excuse me, the server, which we did, uh, you know, we brought to you, I believe, a few months ago, so that we can then start hosting it ourselves, then that we take away that monthly charge. That was about, what, $15,000 a year? $15,000 a month. Yeah. It looks like it was like $12,000 a year. Okay, $12,000 a year, it could cost us uh, 30, I can't remember that expense, but eventually it pays for itself, and then, you know, those sort of expenses are going to go away. Um, obviously, uh, as far as uh, increasing public relations, you know, the more, uh, the, the better ability that we have to get the information out, the more that we can get in, uh, in participation, program revenue, and training expense. I know that, uh, you know, it, it, it's vitally important that we have our, our staff uh, up to date on the current trends, on what's, you know, uh, what's going on in their, their areas of responsibility, Additionally, um, we, we want them, we want to develop them here so that when they go, if they go somewhere else, we can say that you're getting a, a high quality individual um, that, that we have developed um, and that you're benefiting from to switch if someone else comes from you know, someone here. We'd like to have the same thing as well. So um, it just, you know, having a certification is extremely important because it does truly demonstrate to the public that we're committed to uh, parks and recreation, so much so that, that we are professionals, we maintain a certain standard, uh, and we, as Marty was saying, are required to uh, do so many continuing education units uh, per two years uh, span. Um, and uh, it's just one of those things that it, it, it's a must to make sure that everybody is up to, up to date on that. Head off into the program revenues. Program revenues, the, the, one of the things about program revenue is we're, we're putting it together so that they, we expect to have a 30% uh, cost that, that cover the running of the program, which we call administrative cost. So you, normally when we budget programs and fees and anything that falls on a program, we're, we're trying to budget in such a way as that the expenditure is plus 30% of the revenue so it'll be in balance. Now, it doesn't always happen, but in, in some of these programs you'll see here, we have better than 30%. So uh, we're leading into, we, we covered camps for now that they have 
increase, we expect an increase. Uh, even if it stays 9%, 7%, 7% might be kind of high now. That, uh, but that's, that was from 2017, 2018, so we're assuming it's, it's, if we continue that trend, we'll uh, hit that again. But, uh, and then uh, for preschool registrations, those have increased by a, a certain portion. And uh, base, base has been uh, bringing back uh, revenue, revenues in, in relation to expenditures that's above the 30%. And hot shots, the total number of participants in hot shots has continually increased. Yeah, just a quick thing on hot shot. Hot shot is a, a contractual program. So um, that's where we, we hire a, a vendor to come in and do programming for us and we share the revenue and that's on a 70-30 on a split which is uh, a pretty good split considering what other districts get they either get an, an 80-20 or a 90-10 so for us to be able to get um, 30 is, is uh, pretty um, great um, the base program I gotta tell you working with um, district 67 and 70 has been uh, you know a, a great relationship if it worked for uh, their uh, support of those that program, uh, we would not have um, that kind of um, participation. Uh, but I think as you see it, that increase, you know, uh, we have families out there that that need that um, that uh, that program or that support. So for us to continue to do that um, is is important for the community as well. So and getting into programs and revenues. They're all, we've tried to make them all 30% at one time. We've had programs that were 10%, programs that were 20%. There was much reason that there, we couldn't determine sometimes why the logic, why one was 80-20, one was 90-10. So we tried as, as a standard to make them all 30%. Like we, we all are now. And karate is the only one that's 80-20? Okay, recreational program expenses. Again, with the, with the more people in the program, the, the cost of running it is, uh, usually goes up. We can't spend the duties due to other things that we've done to, to offset the cost of labor being up and, and, and different supplies and different ways we purchase the equipment. So we expect the camp expenses to decrease in this budget by 1.75%. Preschools and Kinrazi and base, their well, preschools are down because of some of the things that we monitor, some of the payroll that cost. But for the most part, some Kinrazi or base are totally driven by labor. So therefore, we um, if we have more people, then we need more people to watch them. So the labor naturally will follow the number of people that are in the program. On that, uh, on that first thing. Yes. Um, so an example would be instead of ordering from the usual supplier we used to, it's more competitive with Amazon or or some, something else that we can get a cheaper. Not, not only that, but to try to um, standardize the number of what we buy and what we need, because not to go out and have everybody have their own vendor to try to set, standardize and centralize it to a point where we have fewer vendors, fewer bills, fewer tracking that it's just it makes the from everybody's perspective it makes it much easier to operate. We have five different camp locations and in the past five different camp leaders would be ordering supplies, construction paper from here, pipe cleaners from there. Now we centralized it to one so we have a volume and one person's monitoring the best value. That's great. And, and like I said there, there's things that we can do in the future it's like there's certain the costs that they have daily costs like that they have to have milk or fresh products there and we some way we have to find so that they can right now it's penny cash reimbursement but if we have to um, come up with a way that that we can either a get some kind of a, a account with them to cover that cost so we don't have taxes because you know the sales tax not always recognizing the letter and, Various things like that. So there is, a, a, for the most part, um, it's much better now. There is a good thing we can still do with it. Okay, pools. Well, we we're expecting the, the pool revenues to 
is everybody's favorite thing, pools, right? Everybody loves a pool. So you got to have a pool. So if you've got to have one, you have to have two. So we're we're trying to keep the pool running with the, and, and operating with the most revenues that we can. We're, we've uh, changed the pool fees. I don't know if we, did we change them this year or was it? Yeah. yeah okay. So we, we changed the pool fees this year, but there's other things in a pl play with the pool fees also because of, it's part of the fitness membership for singles and families. And they're, therefore, um, just raising the fees alone won't increase your revenues because you, you may lose some potential people who buy passes to fitness uh, to, that are covered under their fitness membership. Uh, the main one is the second one. We really want to increase the, the daily pool receipts because we want to, those are the ones that we want to try to bring up as much as possible. But fortunately, you're subject to weather and scheduling and, and you know, we, we have, we assume if it's open, we have to fully staff that pool. Oreo requires 15 guards and um, the car is to 9 or 11. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of people we have to stock the, the, the staff at that pool when it's operating, and we, we, the, the, so we, we try to close, we try to schedule it so that we have morning shifts and afternoon shifts instead of them all crossing each other. We're trying to get the most we can out of the because um, staffing and costs for the pool is is the biggest chunk right now of our operating costs. The second thing will be utilities, and the third will be So, and then other things that we can have in the pool, like day camps and that, uh, so that we can use our pool in the, the periods of time where we may not be, it may not be as uh, used mornings, the periods of time when the pool may not get as much use as, as it does on weekends and nights. Or pool expenses. Well, salaries, one, one we, we, again, we can go over the same thing. It's, this one affects us more than anything. There are certain uh, areas of certain employee groups that even if we just pay minimum wage, we're not going to be able to staff it. We have to meet the costs of the area around us. We have to attract the people from other park districts that, that, that will come here versus going out to another park. So we have to be paid competitive wages. And that's, that's one thing that's driving our salaries a little bit more now than minimum wage. Water usage, of course, you know, Har doesn't lose any water. It's, uh, it's never lost it before, and it won't lose it again. So, it's, uh, I'm sure we'll find it. Yes, you know, it's, uh, it's creating a new pool underneath the old pool, yes. and where uh, there's other things that affect with water. Water is becoming a, a, a cost. We don't know yet how much the changes in the cost will be due to changing from Chicago to Evanston water. We, there, uh, there's, um, yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna change. My understanding from the village is that they're going to keep the prices, uh, water prices the same, and the savings that they realize will go back into infrastructure. So uh, we can anticipate uh, not seeing a reduction. Yeah, well, that, that, that's the way it is today, but uh, you know, we, we have to also anticipate in the future maybe that the water usage and the water rates may have to go up for other reasons. Right. And, and there's a, and we don't know yet how much it's going to cost. How many do they? Is that pumping house over on that corner of Evanston enough, or will they need another pump house? I, you know, those are a lot of things unknown right now today that maybe we have a better handle on it's on the 2019 budget. Um, real quick, just so you know, salaries is going to be a, a big thing here. Um, is there Park Ridge just increased their um, part-time salary starting uh, wage to like 11 or $12 an hour. Uh, so that's going to be a challenge to be able to, you know, attract local talent here, train them and, and, and keep them wherever we can. So we, we have built in a little bit um, in the starting wage there, so that's why that increase. Additionally, um, we're estimating, we're, we're anticipating no, no days where the pool will be not operational. So this is at the, the very most what we'll spend 
for um, salaries. Um, of course, you know, if you get a rainy day, you don't have to have as many people, you can shoot them out, it's cold, you can shoot some people out. So uh, it, it's always, but you, you got to plan for the worst. Yeah, I mean, that's typically what we do with, uh, you know, expenses, you plan on the worst. For revenue, you don't plan for the best. Yeah. Kind of hope that it all right. balances out. We like to take a conservative approach on our revenue estimates, but on our expenditure estimates, especially in this year, we have to be, we have to think of everything that, that might affect our costs because we, we we're trying to pass an appropriation ordinance that will cover all our needs and any unforeseen circumstances within a certain percentage. Um, electricity, electricity is a tough one because you know our electricity bills are just. If we could run the gen, if we would run the generator and just use gas, we'd probably save. <laughs> we'd save ourselves some some money because natural gas costs are so much better than electric costs. But uh, running the pumps and, uh, and uh, the filters and that our our electric costs are uh, keep increasing. That's our. Besides, the pools is water, but electricity is on everything else. That uh, every other uh, facility we have electricity. Is Far out doing uh, natural gas. Then, of course, chemicals are uh, increasing. Uh, community center. That's mostly this building right here. We, we also put rental of field houses in here, but for the most part, most of the revenue sources from here are coming from the uh, fitness club memberships and guest fees that are coming along. We, uh, we also, also include in here any rent rentals of community rooms, community uh, gyms any other of the rooms in this building, as well as the, the field houses when they're available. Sure. So you'll have National, which we're gonna rent most of the time, to some of the, uh, pro, some of the rooms that just have, that they, they might have preschool in there, that their rental is very limited. Okay, salaries, uh, again, for the best for the services, the cost of instructors. One of the big jumps in the, the community center is the of the group X instructors, which used to be covered under a program, are now increasing to thir by thirty thousand dollars. Your your fees of operating the community center because because if the if the people that are the additional people who use it are all paying fitness memberships or are covered under fitness memberships, then the cost associated with running group X has to be absorbed by the community center. And again, utilities. So electric the gear is increased, but we kind of offset that with the way we charge for that in, in our membership fees, right? Correct. The, um, group X expenses used to be under program expenses, but because the revenue is all under the community center now with membership, we moved that. It's just a moving that expense aside. Okay. It increased a little bit because we went from about 25 classes a week to 30 classes a week when we made that change in the spring. But it's just really mostly moving it into the community center. And I think the more we promote that, the better we will turn out in the future. Yeah, and we're also seeing that based on the way, you know, everybody is on a 12 month period, not everybody pays at the same time. So you'll see this staggered where we didn't capture a lot of people when we made that change. Now it's coming due, because I actually talked to a, a member who said, hey, what's with the, the price increase? And like, it's been over a year, so that will be the last time. And hopefully we'll see memberships increase because of that. Yeah. And you just, fitness in general is a really competitive uh, industry, because you know, we got one right across the street, and another one uh, less than a mile down the street. So. Okay, we're finally on a record, and the next four or five months are fairly bad because they're almost, they're all identical. They're really just, uh, I know Steve's not going to feel bad about this. Why do you, you know, speed it up, you know, you get it moving here. I don't know what that about today. <laughs> uh, so, I was just saying no. Uh, <laughs> so, they, um, for the most part, the police park department is, covers the, what, the security and the, and the patrolling of the parks. They cover uh, special events, they cover different, uh, they, they, they take the cash to the bank, they, they, uh, they do door checks. So uh, right now we're budgeting them for around uh, nights, three, in the winter time, fall, we 
average on three to four hours a day. During the summer, the hours will be extended to cover the various activities that are in the parks and the amount of um, uh, people that are in the parks past the you know, up to the uh, closing time. One thing that's not here we'll cover later in the capital, not in this one, but on the seventh, will be different capital needs at the police department. Yeah, this is one of these funds that we have, uh, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering, but back in 2016, they were at um, $80,000, about 40, about 40. Yeah. so we've slowly been, you know, inching them down, trying to figure out when we should be using them versus when, you know, uh, when they wanted to be used. So really, the, high, the time period is uh, usually May to um, September is like the bulk of their time that, uh, that we use them. But we could possibly use them even less depending on how we sort of structure uh, or even setting the expectations for maybe the parks department before leaving for the day, going to do door checks or requiring uh, a, a field supervisor to be out at the park um, to turn off the lights, that sort of thing, everything that the police do. Um, but, you know, this is somewhat of a delicate uh, uh, subject because, look, I mean, the, the people really truly expect to see the park police out in the parks. You know, an example, a couple summers ago, the cruiser wasn't working. We were like, well, they could just use the, the truck, uh, big black truck with the lights on it and everything, um, but nobody realized that they were out there because they didn't see the cruiser. So, you know, we had, you know, we, we spent money to be able to put that in there. And I know, uh, you know, a couple, several months ago, the Better Government Association did a report on uh, park districts uh, that have police forces as a redundancy, and then they were talking about, you know, that our police force carries uh, a sidearm, which is you know, one of probably three or four park districts in the entire state that um, allows this. Uh, just recently, some of the, um, uh, well, all the executive directors as part of the member agencies for Manasseh have been communicating about what, which, what we uh, spend as an hourly rate for uh, either uh, park police or rangers. Everybody uses a, a ranger system. We're the only one that uses a park police, and we are, you know, 50 percent higher in an hourly wage than everybody else. So this might be an area that we might have to look further uh, to kind of look at. But you know, we would have to tread a little lightly because of the expectation of the community. Uh, you know, but you know, if we can cut it down a little bit more without having to, you know, completely But being being in the park during the hike the season where people expect to see them, of course we will continue to do that. Um, so the total spend this year is thirty thousand dollars. I'm just making sure is that right? Mm -hmm. At least that's how much sixteen thousand down from last year. How much? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. How many? Um, and again, like I said, you know, it's only the second time I'm doing the budget. But when you have how many police officers are is it shared between a certain amount of police officers, and are they the same police officers that it's shared between? We have four. Four police officers. Four. Are they the, the same four, though? Chief, I mean, the yeah. norm, yeah. the chief, and whoever else? Yeah. But the bulk is done by um, the chief. So just to be clear, I mean, why was it reduced down you know, by $16,000 last year from last year? Uh, it, because it, we continue to, to use them uh, when we need to use them. You know, so you think uh, we, we, don't, we think we're overutilizing them? Uh, in the past, I believe we were, yeah. It's clear that we were. I mean, that. Based on, I'm not sure, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, based on what were we overutilizing them on? Like, well, well, let's use it as an example. Um, they would have to be here at 10 o'clock at night when, uh, at the time, the, the uh, front desk was um, closing to walk people out to their cars. I mean, okay, it's a well-lit parking lot. They don't really see that there's a need to be able to do that. So, you know, um, if you start at seven o'clock and you're here till ten o'clock, is that really, you know, you go around, you check the doors. That's great, but what else more can you do? 
you know, um, certainly control the parks. It doesn't take that long. So to be able to just uh, use them in the winter months, uh, a couple hours, a um, couple days a week or whatever, that makes that makes sense. So, But when we have um, situations like uh, sizzle or just doing some numbers. Uh, holidays where we need presents, then we, we have them out there. Sometimes there's a, a couple of them, and we do some more Morton Grove days, I believe that they're there as well. So, you know, that, that all. So it was about an extra $5,000 a person, you know, when they, that's, that's what they would probably make in regards to, you know, for the extra work that they're doing. I'm just looking at the numbers, trying to understand. Yeah, that. I believe last most, year. What that's what I'm saying between the board. How many guys? Is it? Yeah, I, I mean we have to. We how many, have to how many be, guys? Is it, it's five, five. There's five. But you, you got to remember, we have to. We I mean, have to use saying, them for eight thousand. It's an extra eight thousand dollars a year for those guys, right, to do that. I, I, I'm not sure what you mean by extra. I mean, chief, the chief of park police says a, a, a full-time job. I think everybody. No, no, I, I, I get it. But what I'm saying is, when you look at the revenue. What, I'm just looking at what the revenue was last year, what we're reducing it down to, and finding out you know, how much it's going to impact you know, them. That's all. Mm -hmm. well, no, I, the, I, think, the I appreciate, I appreciate the, the, the concern of, of you know, sort of reducing it. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't save money. I'm just trying to understand why there was the reduction because you know, I think that these guys do a great job at what they do. And obviously, well, that's, it I seems think. like it, it's, a lar it's a large hit, that's all. Then maybe I'm wrong. I'm just trying to understand well, that. No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. So, you know, so we don't get lost here. This is just for eight months. So if you're going to compare them to last year, you have 16, 46,000, let's say. You have what? You have 46,000 or 40,000 for 2017, 18. This is, uh, this is down. For, that's one of the reasons this is going to be down. Okay. The second thing is that, is that during the winter seasons and, and when the parks close earlier, there, there may not be a reason for them to be patrolling. No, I understand. I'm just so, making. I just so want to make hours. sure, in regards to safety, police safety, park safety, whatever, that you know, if we are going to cut costs, you know, that it's a reasonable amount versus significant. Because the way that I and you did, I just want to understand. It seems like a significant cost, and I just want to make sure if we're cutting the cost somewhere that it's not in regards to safety. That's all. Well, I mean, we can relook at this number again. We can. Uh, no, I, I, I think this is. You know, let's just hypothetically, you know, rather than starting at 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning in, in June, we, we started more at noon. Uh, and instead of working until 10 o'clock at night, you're working until 8 o'clock. It's a, you know, use them, use them when, they, when people are in the parks, during a time of the year when people would use the parks. We understand that in the summer months, those are the times. Plus, you have more normal police on the street. It's not like there's no police around. Okay. Plus, we have the, the issue of the vehicle. Yeah. Right. That's, 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 that's the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Like I said, I'm just yeah. just trying to understand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just Our just because you cut the uh, no. also just so we be clear too that we cut the you got a shorter period of time. And if we appropriated more money in last year, we didn't spend it. There, there's the, this, the program or the hours that we set up have been running now for about maybe would you say about two years now? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this we're just not appropriating as much money over there as we had in the past, and it's a shorter period, eight months. So we're trying to uh, anticipate what we'll actually spend from them for a shorter period of time, and pretty it's much staying on the same schedule. Right. Yeah. It is what it is. Uh, I think I get it. Yeah. Okay, next we're going into the museum, similar to the police funds. It's uh, small dollars that we've appropriated to them. Before we used to appropriate, or we used to have a, a museum coordinator or curator there at all times. Now we, some of the services are, are have been have been removed, and we have museum coordinators, attendants, attendants there, and those are they are there three hours every day, and then one day they overlap. So it's um, and the historical society has taken over some of that 
management of the museum. So that has cut down the cost of running the museum quite a bit. The remaining costs are still ours, utilities, cleaning, maintenance, any of those other things that are, we have to do anyway because it's our building. IMRF, the two funds that are coming next to each other are IMRF and FIFA. The, the main difference is IMRF is most, all employees are covered under FIFA. Not all employees are covered under IMRF. IMRF is the Illinois Rick Municipal Retirement Fund, and that amount of money is statutory because if you hire an employee and you take 4.5% on their check, the district, the park district has to match that amount by, they're going to take. 18, 19 percent out of the person's check. And, and, and so they're not going to take out of their check. They're going to compute it and it's going to come out of our funds, out of our levy. So we take the entire uh, amount of that and, and forward it to the IMRF fund, and that's used for the uh, retirees of, that are covered under IMRF, such as all full timers. Plus, right now, currently, I believe we have two part time people that worked enough hours. They went over the 1,000 hours a year, and once you go over 1,000 hours a year, the IMRF, you're supposed to move them over an IMRF. So uh, that's another reason. ACA is another reason. We just like to keep employees below a certain amount of hours, and that's um, 1,000 for IMRF and 1,300 for ACA. If we go, if the individual employees start going over those numbers, they uh, they require to either be a moved over to IMRF or an in, brought in IMRF, and they may we may be subject to a penalty if we don't offer them health insurance. FICA, FICA is just federal uh, Social Security and Medicare. It's our portion, our side of it. it every employee. Um, 6.2% of the Social Security, 1.45 is Medicare. It comes out of everybody's check, and we we match that amount. So we're, whatever they take out of their check, we have to match. Bond and interest. This is bond and interest is just the bond and interest that we have. That's what we call the lower bond, the short bond, the one that's going to be here a year or two. So what? what that one has it has a levy against it that we will pay. So if we borrow nine, if we sell bonds for nine oh nine, we're going to have a levy that's going to have at least nine oh nine. So the effect is that this doesn't cover. In other words, this is not Oreo pool is not covered by this at all. So you have to uh, we we um, we appropriate enough money. This isn't subject to the tax cap. However, it's subject to another regulation called the the data debt service extension base, which. Pretty much the same. You can't go up over a certain amount. We just can't keep increasing this. The only thing can increase is what the CPI is. And this is the one that they were going to freeze the last time to remove the CPI back. But, but it never passed. Liability fund. Liability funds mostly insurance, <coughs> unemployment, uh, workers' comp. Ninety percent of this, these costs are are, are covered under our Derma General. General insurances, not not health insurance, just general insurances, and the uh, the last portion of that would be safety, any kind of safety, any kind of safety requirement that uh, would reduce our liability and as such can be covered under liability. Special rec, special rec, that's been answered for us. We're all part of a, a, a unit of, um, that offers programs. To, uh, to, to people that are uh, that are covered under Manasser, so we don't. This isn't part of the tax cap, but again, it's up to the EAB. You know, we can only put 0.04% of the EAB into it, so we're right around at the max. If we're not at the max right now, um, maybe 60% of this is covered by EAB, and any remaining part is covered under by ADA. So ADA. Uh, improvements such as the paths we did here two years ago, uh, HAR, which we're planning to do this year. Those are uh, part of our ADA plan, and anytime we do anything that's covered under our ADA plan, we can, uh, uh, that's covered under, that could be 
budgeted and paid out from these funds. And finally, the audit fund. That's, uh, you know, that's the audit that comes here in October. He's going to be, they're going to be coming here for October this year in 2018, and then they're going to be coming to present uh, in March of 2019 because of the shorter year. Our, our new audit cycle will cycle means they'll probably be here in March or April, and they'll be presenting in front of you either on, in May or June. And I'm only going over this a little bit because we're going to, on March uh, 7th, we're, we we're going to bring the capital plan up for approval. So I just hit the highlights of this. We're, we uh, The capital plan covers one park a year, so we're doing Pioneer. The, uh, the fitness club, we have budgeted $50,000 for new equipment. And the, the main part of it is the 640000 that we're going to use for the payment of the Oreo pool bond. They'll be up there on March 7th or March 23rd. Ah, any questions? Good job. Nice job. Any questions? Very good job. Ah, I could have started with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Then I'm going to see what well, the questions are. Yeah, so I, I think overall, I mean, I, I want to thank uh, Joe and Keith, Laura, uh, the entire uh, recreation staff, uh, Marty, uh, for doing a, a wonderful job of, of you know, thinking of this. This is um, a, a guidepost for you know, the future. Um, it's a lot of guesswork, um, but wherever you can, you can make it as initiated as, as you can. And I think that um, they've done exactly that. Um, you know, we have only a certain pot of money, and that's not going to grow uh, from year after year in, in big leaps. So it's how we distribute it out, how we um, look for efficiencies wherever we can, um, cut where we can. Uh, but it's, it's going to get to a certain point that, you know, we, we might have to make more, you know, more dramatic or draconian uh, decisions uh, when it comes to the budget. So, we'll uh, see. What? Hey, you like that? I like to throw out a new word every once in a while for you. It's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say thanks, too, because was, I know it's a lot of extra work with the shorter budget switching. Calendar year and all that. Can't even fathom the amount of hours I've spent to. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, Keith's going to be interesting. Throw darts at the wall, see what happens. You, 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 you got to wait until like September or October when they do a second one in, in yeah. a year. So, well, but anyway. Well, well done, too. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for, for streamlining it like that. <laughs> That was streamlined. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Felt like that. You haven't seen Marty stream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so again, uh, Marty's already said, but the capital improvement plan will be on uh, Wednesday. We do it separately because um, distinguished agency they might like to see that we uh, approve it independently of the overall budget. But it does give you an additional opportunity to look at what we're planning for capital improvement what we anticipate are going to be future needs uh, for uh, improvements and to see you know uh, where we actually have the money to be able to do that so you like to start bigger there. picture there's the budget for additional swag um yeah that pad of paper is is your swag <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll get it okay, okay. Does anybody else have uh, let's, uh, let's, be, let's be flying you out. Great. Any additional questions that looks like to be fancy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No? I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a difficult celebration. 10 20, 6, 6. Huh? I call the picture.